with hundreds having shaved their lives and thousands languishing in jails bloom such a day. Meanwhile, Congress party had bounced back to power. All sorts of political activities and democratic movements were cracked up. On 26th June 1975, a state of emergency was declared. 1972 to 1977 were bleak years for the communist revolutionaries. The period was marked by confusion, split and disintegration. Those outside the jail were trying to reorganize the movement with their own understanding. In 1977 general elections, Congress was routed all over India. The new government was under tremendous pressure to release all the political prisoners. Many were released and an opportunity for reorganization arose. Now began a period of introspection and reorganization. The process of evaluation of all that happened between 1967 and 1972 had already begun. Three distinct political trends began to emerge. One held that the political line of CPIML was totally wrong. They returned to the parliamentary path. The second represented the view that the path was totally correct. They dogmatically adhered to the old political line. The third trend said that though basic political formulation of CPIML were correct, some serious mistakes had been committed. A self-critical review was prepared in 1974 identifying these mistakes. Andhra Pradesh State Committee began reorganizing the party based on this review. Later in 1980, the CPIML People's War and the CPIML Party Unity reached to a common understanding on self-critical review. What were the mistakes? There was a concept of quick victory both nationally and internationally. Annihilation was made the only form of struggle. Building mass movement and mass organization were branded as revisionism. Building the party organizations was totally neglected. Learning from the mistakes of Nakshalbari, a new beginning was made in late 70s. Some parties of the third trend emerged stronger during the 1980s after building a significant mass base and engaging in armed struggle. The most prominent were CPIML People's War, CPIML Party Unity and the MCC. The People's War was formed in April 1980 and Party Unity in January 1982. These parties have continued the revolutionary legacy of Nakshalbari imbibing all the positive aspects and learning from the mistakes. Andhra Pradesh State Committee of CPIML took the initiative to form several mass organizations. By 1974, Revolutionary Writers Association, Birasam, Radical Students Union, Radical Youth League, Jananakta Mandali were formed. Post-emergency, these mass organizations propagated the politics of Nakshalbari very extensively. Jananakta Mandali took AP by storm by its electrifying revolutionary cultural programs. In 1978, the first go-to-village campaign was organized with the students and youths for propagation of revolutionary politics among poor and landless peasants. The peasant struggle of Jagitthal in Telangana region rose like a wave. 
the historic Jagital victory march set the stage for the upsurge of intense anti-feudal struggles in Karimnagar and Adilabad. By 1980, developing Karimnagar, Adilabad, Warangal and Khammam into a guerrilla zone and lay foundation for base areas come as an immediate task before the party. So armed squads were formed in the forest areas of this district. To build a rear area to this guerrilla zone, armed squads were sent into Dandakaranya, the vast central Indian forest tract in the bordering district of Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh and Odisha states. Party unity initiated its activity in Jehanabad region in Bihar from 1979-80. A huge torchlight rally was organized on April 1981 as a demonstration of strength, a challenge to reactionary feudal authority. As a backlash, villagers were charged with false cases at the behest of landlords. On 24th November, Ram Parvesh, a notorious landlord and owner of Red Kiln, was annihilated by the party. The movement in Jehanabad region caught the momentum. Laced with hills and forests, and being one of the most backward districts of then Bihar, Palamu was strategically an ideal place. Naturally, party chose to build movement there. Comrade Krishna Singh soon emerged as the most popular leader of the masses. Terrorized by the growing anti-feudal movement, landlords murdered him and dreamed of finishing the movement. Palamu lost its beloved leader, but not its inspiration. A mass upsurge followed, demanding punishment of the killers of Krishna Singh. Thousands of villagers marched to Dalton Ganj, defying the police threat. In the next few years, mass struggles on issues of fair wages for agricultural labor, for abolition of bondage and feudal oppression spread like a wildfire. Since then, there was no looking back. The armed guerrilla squads of People's War spread the message of revolution to the goons, the tribal masses of Dandekaranya. Being one of the most backward regions of the country, the compradors, moneylenders, forest officials, tribal heads had a free hand to exploit the local tribal people. Oppressed for centuries, deceived and trampled, but with glorious traditions of revolts, these Adivasi people owed to the beats of Turum, the traditional drum. Struggles erupted against the cruel exploiters of tribal and non-tribal people. In Andhra Pradesh, the first conference of Girijan Raitukuli Sangham, Adivasi Mazdur Kishan Sangathan, was scheduled to be held at Indra Valley in Adilabad district on 20th April 1981. The government chose to nip the movement in the bud. Thirteen people were killed when police fired indiscriminately on a rally near the conference venue. But this repression further begots revolts. Tendu leaf struggle spread like a forest fire. Tribal peasantry moved on a large scale to occupy thousands of acres of government and forest land. Struggles arose for higher wages against ashari for remunerative prizes for forest produce and many other issues. In the process of developing movement during 1980-84, Tribal peasants and workers' organizations emerged as leading organizations. In both Andhra Pradesh and Dandekaranya, along with armed struggle, mass organizations and mass movements proved to be indispensable in unleashing the initiative of the people. The experience of party unity in Bihar also proved the same. By 1986, Bazdur Kisan, Sangram Samiti or MKSS became a force to reckon with. The party had to face severe repression from the very onset. Operation Task Force was launched 